We try to, to call the police. We try to call the army, but nobody could help because Kibbutz Kfar Aza was attacked with 300 terrorists at that time. We, I didn't know that at that time. I didn't know nothing. I just know about him. But after he disappeared, I understood what happens in all the kibbutz and people murdered there. 62 people from this kibbutz murdered. 18 was kidnapped, children, old people, and Yotam is still there. My name is Iris, Iris, and my son Yotam, uh, he's uh, 28 years old. He's, uh, as you, she's showing your figure good. Uh, as you see, he's a very charming boy. He's my second son. Yotam is a uh, musician, mus musician. He's a drummer. He's a uh, heavy metal uh, drummer. He likes pets, he likes um, music, he likes sport. He's uh, playing in a drum uh, band, in a, a heavy metal band in Israel. And as, uh, as you heard, he, he, he planned, he had a lot of uh, dreams and plans. And in that day, in the morning of the 7th of October, our Black Sabbath, he he live he's living alone in the kibbutz Kfar Aza. Uh, he is a bachelor. He is not married. He don't have a girlfriend. And it, at that morning, he planned to go to perform in a music festival in Tel Aviv. And he really want, wanted to go there. He planned this for a long time. This is one of his dreams to be famous drummer. And that day, this is his uh, brother, Yotuval, he's also a musician, is his sister, Noya. Uh, Yotam is the red hair in the side. And what was the, seems to be like a very nice uh, Shabbat, Saturday, became a horrible and hell for him, for us. At 6.30 a.m., he let us know that uh, the kibbutz is bombed is is bombed and we are also live there near the, near this kibbutz in another place a moshav little place also in gaza surrounding we heard his uh, his voice his message his text us in the group the family group in the beginning he was upset that he cannot go to the festival this is what mostly <laughs> bothered him but after a while he understood that this attack is not a missile attack this is a terror attack he stayed really calm i don't know how in his safe room it's a little room and he drank, played the drums there inside the safe room just to keep himself and normal or something not faint but as much as the time comes and it started to be to be very very frightening. He wrote us. Uh, he wrote us in the in the group that the terrorists they attacking his house. They are uh, shooting on his door. They are breaking inside the house, and they are shooting on the safe room door. They are burning the house. They light gas. He wrote me. He called me Ma Mamo. <laughs> because then a few years ago we went together to France I don't know if there are some France people here and we heard in the plane that the children in the in France children called their mothers Mamo so since then me and him call each other Mamo I call him also Mamo and he wrote me I hope I will survive this I can I don't know if I will survive, but I love you. And for a half hour, just ask for help. Please, please send somebody. I don't have air. I will not, I cannot breathe in the Mamad, called Mamad, safe room. And we, we couldn't help. My husband wanted to go out from our Mushav and go out to help, but the older road was full with terrorists killing people and we knew that and he couldn't go and couldn't help so as a mother 
and father, not just mother, also father, we are so helpless. Uh, it's a boy, Yotam is uh, our second boy, he's a special person, he has uh, also um, some problems, medical problems, mental problems, so we are really connected with him. There was no one, even that he is 28, it's like, for us, he is like a baby because, because of his problem, because of his needs. We were in touch with him every day, few times a day to, to, to support him. And now he disappeared for, for us in 10.44 a.m. in Shabbat, in this Saturday, 7 of October, 10.44. I, I remember, we all remember, all of the Israelis that the children gone, they remember this, the exact minute that the uh, last uh, message was sent, 10.44, 5.99, we all remember exactly. So 10.44 was the last message that he said, I don't have air, I cannot breathe, and I write him, go to the window, try to open the window. The window in the safe room is an iron, iron uh, window. He couldn't open. And he told me that he cannot go there because they, are, they will kill him outside. He's afraid all the time. He, he was afraid to go to breathe air. The, the basic thing, air. He didn't have air. So at 10.44 a.m., we lost contact contact and we tried for the more 48 hours to look for him all over Israel in all the hospitals. We didn't know if he's alive or not. And until now, we, we, we don't have any information about him. He needs medicines, he needs his medical treatment. And we don't know what's going on with him. I, I'm going all over the world to talk about him, to, to try to influence. We, I was in Australia now. I just yesterday came back with, uh, with a delegation from Israel, with other families that also talking about their miss, the loved people that killed there or, or are missing or kidnapped. And since I tell you this day, we... We need we need all the world help that everybody will understand that what's happened to my son and to Edith, she will speak after me, and to all other kidnapped or murdered people that was murdered that day. We we, are, we know so many of them. Is that Hamas terrorists are the terror against all the world and. Yotam he is a simple person. I'm a, I'm a nurse. I'm a palliative nurse. I don't sit in my house with guns. I, I'm not against nobody. We wanted to live together and I want my son to come back. We are not diplomats. He don't need to be there. He need to come back to be in, with his family, with us, everybody needs to be together with his family. If you allow hey. me for a second, we will uh, let everyone hear the son's voice in those moments of terror. And uh, we have this translated for you. And then we will show two videos of Kutzmal Aza uh, when everything went down. Sure that you can hear my screen as well. Yeah. Hi, Boker Tov. אימה אני לא יודע אם גם את באותה סיטואציה, אבל כפר עזה מופגזת בקסאמים, כמובן היום. זהו, רק רציתי לעדכן, האזור פה חם רצח פתאום בשנייה, ו... וזהו. אני כן פוחד, אני יותר מתבאס מזה שביטלו את הפסטיבל. פאקינג אין לנו הופעה היום. 
בני זונות, מה זה החרא הזה? באמת, כאילו, הסתדרתי עם הרעש, כאילו, יאללה, הכנסתי לה אנרגיה אפילו. וזהו, אין פסטיבל היום. מה ש... אין, אין פסטיבל. לא, אבא, היה, היה לנו ירי בתוך הקיבוץ, ממש שמעתי את זה מאחורי הבתים, אני שומע את האנשים צועקים בערבית, בעברית. יש פה מחבלים בתוך הקיבוץ, או היו, אני לא יודע אם הם מתו, אני מקווה שאביאני בסדר. העיריות עכשיו נמשכות פשוט קצת מחוץ לגדר. אמא, אי אפשר לצאת מהבית, אסור לפתוח את הדלת כבר. כאילו, באמת, אי אפשר, יכולים לראות בי. יש מחבלים בתוך הקיבוץ. חדירה. ככה עושים חדירות כהוגן, חבר'ה, יאללה. שרה בקר. This is the voice messages, and we have a lot of uh, text messages where he writes us that he is afraid, and he, we try to, to call the police, we try to call the army, but nobody could help because Kibbutz Kfar Aza was attacked with 300 terrorists at that time. We, I didn't know that at that time. I didn't know nothing. I just know about him. But after he disappeared, I... Uh, I understood what happens in all the kibbutz and people murdered there, 62 people from this kibbutz murdered, 18 was kidnapped, children, old people, and Yotam is still there. We don't know anything. We need information. We need information from the Red Cross. We need your journalist. When you are giving the, this news in your countries, think what a mother feel when her son is not with her, doesn't matter his age. He's 28, he's a young person. He needs his family. So when you are reporting and when you are making your um katavot, uh, your articles articles station can katavot please give out your fee please give out point of view please 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 give the point of view of innocent civilians which didn't, my son was not in the army, he, even not a soldier. He was not a soldier because of his mental problems. And the world must understand now what is, what is the duty of the world. Each one of you that's writing, you have, a, you have a, your a mission. It's extreme mission to, to bring truth to the world, to try to influence your people, your governments in all over the world where you are. I don't know who is here from where, but I, I'm trusting you. I trust you that if you come here to hear me, it means that you want not just to publish and you know another item is for to bring truth. It's a very, very heavy duty, very, very heavy. Journalists all over the history make a change. You can make a change. I can't agree with you more. Excuse me. Uh, we yeah. will have time for questions later. Please uh, wait. Uh, for this Excuse time. me. Yeah. Excuse me. Uh, your time only Israeli? Or Iraq Israeli? No. No. We, no. We, we succeed, to, we succeed to, to make now a Polish, uh, Polish uh, 
אזרחות. סדרסנשיפ. פוליש. אוקיי, אנדרסטנד, אנדרסטנד, תודה רבה. אני מבין בולגריה, אבל... אוקיי, תודה רבה. אז אידית, אתה יכול להגיד לנו על זה עוד פעם, אם אתה רוצה. Yeah, can I ask you me to start? Okay, fine. Everybody can see me? Oh, wonderful. Okay, because I can't see myself, that's why I'm asking. Okay, um, so I'm Edith Oil, and this is my son, Alon. Um, Alon is 22 years old. Um, he went to the party, to the Nova party, and he was kidnapped from there. I will tell you the story. Um, Alon loves music. He's a pianist. He, music is part of his life. He does many things with that. Um, you know, everywhere he goes, he plays. This is when he was playing in the uh, Philippines. Uh, just a month and a half before he was kidnapped, he was in a, in traveling all over Asia. So he was playing every pub he saw. He went inside and played the piano because he knew that it was we'll good, we'll do a good thing with, you know, with friends and people that were there. Um, so Friday night, uh, it was actually Friday morning, he told me, Mom, I'm going to this party. I have a friend. He has tickets. I said, fine, wonderful. Have a good time. Friday night after, uh, after dinner, he came in and uh, went to the to the living room, played the piano, and uh, and went with his friends. His brother took him to his friends in Misgav, and uh, and they drove uh, in, with a friend. There were five friends uh, who drove uh, to uh, to the north where the party was. Sorry, to the south, completely to the south. The party was in, uh, in Reim, near, near this place called Reim. He got to, this, uh, to the party at 5.30 in the morning, and by 6, they started to hear rockets falling down. The first thing that they thought to do was to get into the car and find a bomb shelter to get cover. At this time, nobody knew that there were Hamas uh, on the way, just just not far away, trying uh, to kill everybody. They found, uh, they drove and they found the nearest bomb shelter, which is Nir'im bomb shelter, it's a special bomb shelter, uh, where there's no, um, a, if you know what a bomb shelter is, this this special bomb shelter, it, you go inside, there's there's like a place, um, like a, did you go inside? There's no door. You can't close it. It's open. But it's just like this, um, I don't know, made of uh, blocks and um, concrete. Uh, this bomb shelter usually uh, can in, 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 in insert about 10 people inside. There were 30 inside. So five of uh, Alon's friends and 25 other people were inside about his age, uh, 22 until 30, something like that, 36 maybe of age. Um, they got into this bomb shelter and about, I don't know, a 20 minutes, maybe a half an hour later when they were still waiting to see what's going on, the Hamas came and started to throw uh, about been eight or 12 grenades into the bomb shelter. So they threw one grenade and then another and then another. But there was this guy, uh, his name was Anel, who took these grenades in his hands and started to throw the grenades outside, throwing each grenade that came inside, he took in his hand and threw out. The, the, the eighth grenade that was thrown inside uh, blew up and many in living many injured and also Anir was killed uh, that moment. The Hamas came inside and took 
my son and three others. My son, uh, you can see there is a footage, a video footage so showing this. And I wanted to show you this footage now so you can see what happened. If you, um, if Karen can show this footage, I will explain what you see. Um, yeah, this one. You will see it now. So this is, uh, you can't hear it, but there are... <laughs> the okay, as so you can see, just one second. Just this is this is not my son this is Hirsch uh, Goldenberg a person that was inside you can see my son just continue please okay this is now, now this is my son. The person that they're dragging right now, this is my son. There's blood on him and he is frightened. He was trying to fight them. They're putting him inside the car and taking him, pushing him and beating him inside the, the truck. Okay, this is how this inside you can see the, the uh, uh, shelter. So it's like an open shelter. This is it, you can stop it. it, it doesn't matter. So you can actually see how they were taken very harshly. He has blood on him because of the, the bomb. The grenade that was uh, that blew up. Um, he wrote to us on WhatsApp to my to my husband to his father at uh, 750 something like that that he was in a bomb shelter and he was fine uh, but in the bomb shelter whoever knows this there is no um, you, you can't send mes messages there's uh, it's it's blocked okay the the Wi-Fi is there's no Wi-Fi so when they were grabbing him his phone fell. And at 8.08 o'clock in the morning, the message was sent to us. So probably he was taking at the same time that the message was sent to us. Um, so that was the last time we heard from him. We don't know where he is. We don't know how he is. We don't know where with who he is. We know that Hamas took him because we can see the footage, but we don't know exactly up till today uh, the Red Cross have not seen him or haven't got seen anybody that is uh, that none of the hostages yet. So we didn't get any um, word about him up till today. It's been 60 days since he was kidnapped. Um, so that's so from that day till today, uh, we are fighting my family is fighting and the way we are fighting to help alone come back to us is by asking for help and asking the community to think and do good things for him we have been doing many things for the community and many things for alone to bring him back home alone because he's a pianist and he plays piano and i brought a piano it's called the yellow piano and into this. Um, this is the yellow piano. It says alone. You're not alone. Many, many people that play the piano, many artists, famous ones, less famous ones, just children, um, teens, anyone who wants to comes and plays the piano. And the playing of the piano is a special thing because what it does it helps anybody who plays cope with this problem now, with what they're do, what they're having, what they're going through, and also making sure that alone mm. is not alone. He is not alone. He is with uh, with people who play with him. It's you see, it's like a light. So when a person comes and play, the light is on him, on the person who's playing. But he's in touch with alone, 
and the energy and the things that they are playing goes to alone in in an energy way you know that's what i believe and i in the fact that they're thinking of him when they're playing they they're thinking of him coming back to us so we're doing this and this is very important and this is very effective and everybody in israel knows this piano and i hope everybody in the world will know about this because we gives hope we're hoping for alone to come back he's we can listen to him play if you can see it's a beautiful song he's a I don't know if you can hear it. Um, so he's been, uh, you want to try that? You can. So this is him playing uh, one of the, one of the pieces that he was playing. Uh, he's also a he plays jazz. He plays many things. Uh, so I'm fighting and asking you for help. You know, you have the power. You have the a very important job to do. Is after we, you know, me, Iris, and I were talking to you and telling you about our son, our special son. Um, we need you to go back to your home town or your home country and tell the citizens there what's going on in Israel. Tell them and, and tell this story, okay, and ask what they can do, what you can do tomorrow, today, not tomorrow, today, right now, to change everything, to make sure that our sons come back home. And you have the power the power of speech, the power of doing, the power of making sure that the government knows what's going on, your government, the power of people getting together, united together, all the people in the world, making sure that terrorism does not continue, that this dark, dark, dark place of terrorism and hurting people, innocent civilians, that just went to a party or were just in their house, in their home, doing nothing, nothing bad for anybody. Bad people coming and, and taking them and killing them uh, because of who they are, because they were in this place of Israel, because they, they wanted to do this bad thing to our country, to these people, and do something about it. Um, and asking your government, asking whoever to help us, to help Israel, stop this. You know, something of this kind of terrorism is, is very, it hasn't happened, I don't think in anywhere in the world as much as it happened here. Um, and we don't want this to happen anywhere else, you know. I think uh, in every country that I have heard, some terrorism come and, 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 and kills many people. It, it happened in England, uh, in London, I think. Mm -hmm. It happened in America, in New York. It's happened in just a couple of uh, weeks ago. It happened in uh, Ireland, okay, where uh, Muslims came and, and did what they did. So it's happening all the time. But we need to think of what we can do to change that. And by changing that is our, our, by doing something. And we need your help. That's the way we are fighting. And that's when the way we need. We, are, we want to give good in this world. We want to change this world to be better. But we need your help to do that. And doing that is bringing them home so we can do the change. And we can change the world for a better place, but we need you. Um, 100%. And I really want to thank Judith and also Eric.
it is incredibly not trivial for either of you to be here and tell your family story with us. I'm sorry, I'm gonna use the dog, yeah. Um, and quite honestly, I personally feel that we are all quite privileged to have spoken with you today because your time is very valuable in order to get your sons back. Um, we will now uh, move to the second part of this conversation. It's, it is a Q&A session. Please raise your hands if you have a question with the, uh, the, uh, the button down and I will unmute you. Please specify to whom your question is directed to. And please, I really urge you to be as sensitive as possible to uh, to the mothers here talking. So uh, first question goes to Junko, Yasmin. Go ahead, if you could unmute yourself. Uh, can you hear? Okay. Yeah. Um, I'd like to can ask you- turn on your camera, maybe? Ah, yeah, okay, sorry. Thank sorry, you. I'm a reader of the driving. Uh, I'd like to ask you about, uh, you, you know, the, it's uh, really need to bring, the, bring back the, all of the hostess people. And it was uh, like a uh, case fires and bring to the people uh, around 810 people, including the foreign uh, nationalities. But now starting to again to the war and it looks like stop of the, I mean, it's not so uh, actively to make in negotiation. So how do, which, which, how do I bring back? Because Israeli government said the pressure of the military fighting will be maybe bring back again. Or, oh, but the other side, somebody said, because they are not inside in the tunnel, some of the people stay in the house. Maybe it's uh, also the dangerous of the bombing or kind of fighting things. What do you think about uh, which way or what kind of way, or what do you think about this current situation? of the Israeli government and then in the situation in Gaza. I know it's a really bit a difficult question, but I want to li listen from the voice of the mother. For both. We, firstly, we have to say, I think Iris will say the same as I am. We are not a military strategist and we are not, um, we don't understand about politics, okay? Firstly, I understand who want to ask us as mothers what we think. I will tell you what I think, and I think Iris will tell what she thinks, but I think we think the same. We need our son to come back home. We have faith that our government and that the RDF, the, the military, is doing all their best to bring us, our sons home, okay? They're doing what they need to be, to do, to be done, okay? Uh, we have we have faith in that. Obviously, we we want to make sure that they are safe during during this ordeal, during this fighting. Okay, so uh, we think that um, we are we have faith in our sons that they are strong and they will and they will overcome this. And we want our government and the military to do what they do as fast as they can, as fast as possible, to uh, re uh, to start the negotiations as fast as possible. Because every day, every moment that our sons are there, they are in danger. Because we don't know if they have food water or air to breathe where they are because because if they're underneath the ground there's not much air if they're over we don't know if they're you know if they're danger of anything that's coming out from uh, above so we need as fast as possible for everybody to do everything that they can to get them out 60 days is too much 60 days 
is it's over you know i don't want the 61 day i don't want to see 65 days we want them coming back home now okay so what the government is doing and what the idf doing they are doing because they have no choice they have no choice we need to get other governments with us now Alon has a serbian citizenship okay he's also serbian the serbian government is doing what they need to be doing but all of the governments all over the world need to be helpful and need to do also okay which is means need to talk to whoever needs to be talked to and make sure that the red cross is getting to our sons and giving them what they need now that's the that's what we mothers need for them to get help for them to get medicine for them to, for us to know that they're okay a word from them a, a video from them something that we know that they will be okay that's what we need Do you want to add to that? No, I don't want to add. I think uh, Edith said everything. Okay, 100%. And right. This is why we're doing this conversation. We need your voices as well to reach your country, to reach your government in order to get the message through and the pressure on in order to get the Red Cross inside to have any, any kind of information about these people, these sons, these families, you know, like we are all in the dark with them because we do not know their situation. We do not know what's going on. And this is unbelievable after 60 days, unbelievable. Karen, can I say something else? Is it okay? Sure, sure, sure. Okay. You know, today, this is really funny. I'm saying it's funny because it's not really funny, but this is funny. We have so much media. We have TikTok. We have uh, uh, Instagram. We have Facebook. We have phones. We have everything. All the media in the world. Okay? When there was the Holocaust, I'm going back, right? In the Holocaust, there was nothing. Nobody knew for years what's going on, okay? Nobody knew anything. So the killing continue, and we couldn't get help, okay? The Jews in the Holocaust. Today, we have everything. We have footage. I saw, I showed you footage of my son. We are talking right now. I, you see me talking about my son, okay? We know a lot of things. But still, I hear from family abroad telling me, that this, that people think that what's going on in Israel is fake news, fake news. And they're not, and some people think that, okay? So this is unbelievable. Okay, we have all the media in the world. You are here to listen to us speak and you're listening to a mother of mothers of people, of our sons that are in Gaza, okay? you have the power that that the Holocaust people didn't have for 50, 70, 80 years ago, okay? You have this power now. You have to make sure that nobody in your country will say this is fake news. It's not I fake news. Say, I want to say about, to add about that, another fact, another thing. When I am going back to 1933, or 1939 or 1940, all the world stand uh, and didn't believe that Hitler will will uh, um, will Lichtelet, uh, will occupy to try occupy. to occupy all the all the world. They think it's just the, the Jewish problem. Just uh, Churchill understood. I don't know if there is British people here in the audience, but uh, also the Americans and the French people, they didn't believe until it got to their door. Just after they, it, it got to, to their doors, they realized that it's not a matter of Jewish or not Jewish. It's a matter of the free world against the, the evil. So when you are thinking about our sons 
about me, Iris Chaim, in your time, Chaim, Chaim is life, Chaim, the meaning of the word Chaim is life. We want to live, we want to be safe. We want to raise our children in a normal, normal country, exactly like you have in your countries. I don't want to continue to be afraid all the time when I'm walking in the street, just because I'm a Jew in Israel. Even inside Israel, I don't have now safety. And like it did said, please, when you are writing your um, articles, try to send a message, a real message. It's not Israeli mother problem. I see here a lot of women. It's also your your problems as mothers to get to be careful because if Israel will get apart, there's no shield now to the world more anymore. True. It's, yeah. it's all our problem. It's a problem. It's a yeah. world problem. True. If anyone has more questions, please raise your hand. Yeah, Evelyn, go go ahead and mute yourself. You can ask right. your question. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, I want to make a comment uh, from Germany. Um, I'm, a, I'm a senior editor for a weekly newspaper there. And I want to thank the two mothers for their testimonies um, very much. I have to say that I deal with militant Islamism for 13 years now in my job. And I know what they are doing. And so that means since October 7th, I do nothing else in my job. And I can just say that um, the testimonies and um, are so important. Uh, and every word that you said about spreading this information and spreading the truth and therefore influence political decision making, not just in Israel, but first and foremost in other countries especially uh, in Germany, is the most important thing. And unfortunately, um, the media is not uh, doing the job, in my opinion, as it should do the job um, worldwide. We have big fights about that, but I can tell you that um, there are people who fight for you within the media also. So, um, yeah. Uh, thanks for, for sharing this and sorry for that. I'm so emotional. I work too much um, about oh. uh, with, um, uh, with documenting the crimes they do. So I'm having the hardest time for me is um, when I hear the, the relatives of the hostages. But we will not um, surrender and we, we will support. Thank you, Evelyn. It's very important, very important for us to hear that. You are a very good ambassador of the truth. And after a while, maybe 50 years from now, when we will not be alive anymore, the history will remember the good people that were there for us, for everybody. And you will be one of them. Yeah. Thank you. You're, you're a very special person for saying that. Um... And uh, you know, I, yeah, I appreciate it so much because sometimes when you are here in Israel, you think you are alone, but we are not alone. The fact that you are here and you're telling us this is very important. It makes us be strong. It makes us feel that somebody sees us, somebody hears us. And this is so important because in our life, all of you in your life, Everybody in their life wants somebody to see them, love them, hear them. And it doesn't matter in what situation, in what a, even a boy from small age, what they want for us to hear us, to listen to us, somebody to love us. So that's what we need from you, from all of you that are here. 
to be with us and understand this. And all the mothers, I, I, I don't know if some of you are mothers or not, but you must understand what we are going through. Six, it doesn't matter if our son is 28 or 22 or two years old or three or whatever, or even 60. I wish I would be 60 and I wish I would be 90 years old and my son would be 60 or something. I don't know. I'm thinking there will always be our children, always. And we as mothers have to fight always. <laughs> we never stop fighting. And you should never do that either. Fight for us, all the mothers and everybody to bring us, to bring us, our sons and our daughters and our mothers and our fathers home. You have to help us do that. It's so important because if we don't have you for us to, um, then we, you know, what else is there? So thank you. And thank you for saying that, Evelyn. You are special. And um, I would love to talk to you afterwards if you can call me personally, please. Thank I want to you tell so you much. something. Thank you. Thank you, Evelyn. Um, if we do not have any more questions, I would like uh, to emphasize again what Iris Annie did said. This moment that we're here in this Zoom conference, you are not watch, watching a movie. This is not a series. This is not a documentary. As the term of this Zoom meeting, you won't see the captions, the end. You are witnessing something that is still happening. And you all, all of you, have something that you can do with it. The ending is not yet set. The world said never again, prove it, okay? You are able to help change their reality. For your time and for alone and for everyone else is still there and influence what happens to them next. You have countless of ways to help. Publish articles, speak for, out for them, share the stories on social media, speak to your representatives, the Red Cross, the UN, act, act now. And on this note, please, uh, this conversation has been recorded and we will send you the link of it uh, when it's ready. I just want uh, uh, to thank again Media Central for collaborating with us. And mostly to you, Iris and Edith, this is invaluable. This is the most important thing that I could do with my time. And I thank you from the bottom of my heart. And everyone here thanks you as well. And uh, Evelyn, please reach out to us and we will give you this uh, uh, info. Thank you again. See you on the next meeting. Thanks. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you so much.